Shalom, Chavarim, Yikarim. Shalom, everyone. We continue the Gate of Envy. The title, the topic is Envy Like Korach. We just read about Korach in the last parasha. Korach, who was Korach? He was a levy. He was the richest man on earth. He found the treasure when the people left Egypt. The people of Israel left Egypt. He found the treasure. You know, the people of Israel were in the desert around 3.5 to 4 million people. That's the calculation that our sages got into. More or less these numbers. I mean, kids and everybody all together, okay? It was a huge, huge camp because everyone brought his own donkey, horses, cows, goat, sheep, whatever they have. Fine. This guy, Korach, he found the treasure. He was so rich. He had 300 mules. Again, you know what mules are, right? Mm -hmm. 300 mules carrying the keys for his safe. Wow. This is how rich he was. The keys. After this mule, containers locked oh. after him. So imagine to yourself, someone is so rich, like, who do you know rich? Bill Gates mm -hmm. is very sad. He's upset. Why you said you have over, I don't know, 50 billion dollars? I don't know how much you have. Billions of dollars. Why are you so upset? I want to be the president. It's not enough that he's rich. He can buy whatever he wants. He wants to be the president. If he's going to become a president of the United States, he's not happy. His life is not worth nothing. It should be look or stupid. What is this? Right? doesn't make sense. If I give you one billion dollar, you'll be happy? You don't want to be a president, right? <laughs> Fracture of it, you'll be happy. How is it possible that Korach was so rich, he challenged Moshe Rabbeinu and says against Moshe Rabbeinu horrible things, and he was willing to lose his own life for this challenge. And the way he did it, he lost his, his life, and he's lost the family. And we'll see in a minute what happened. You see what? Envy can get you. The next part that we are going to read is very, very important. So pay attention. We are on page 269. Nine. No, 269. Yeah, 269. Yes. Go ahead. Without doubt, one who thinks in this manner will not desire and not envy but to the contrary will rejoice in seeing the tranquility of the wicked and will say, if this is the lot of those who anger him, how much more so will he give and give again to those who do his will? Vedashit Rabbah 65.22 Envy stems from deficiency of soul. Oh, deficiency mm. of soul. It means the problem is in your heart, the problem is in your neshama. What is neshama? Neshama. If you envy, as soon as you envy at someone, you just see his car, says, oh my God, he's not deserve it. I should have it. You should know you have a problem. What is your problem? You envy. You neshama, it's no good. Spoiled. You have a problem there. Because if you envy at someone's beauty, let's say that someone is beautiful. Someone is tall, someone is smart. And you envy at him. What's the point? God created him like that, right? And God created you like that. So what you're saying is, I'm not happy with, all that, with what, the way you created me. You challenge you, Hashem. It's like saying to Hashem, Hashem, you don't know what you're doing in this world. The way someone looks, or whatever he has, it's not your business. Ken, Rochelle. What's the difference between like, admiring and envy? Like, sometimes you look and you 
So what's the difference between admiring and envy? Okay, there's a big difference. And we discussed that before. There is a, admiring could be a little bit like envy, but it's a good envy. For example, depends who you're admiring, right? Good envy is when you see someone is a scholar. He is a great, he has a great talent. I say, you know what? This is so great. I wish I was there. I want to be like him. Okay, I'm going to do something about it. What are you going to do? You're going to start open books and study it in order to become smarter, become greater, become scholar. This guy is such a good sport. It looks healthy. So you're going to start to do sport too. It's a good envy because you're going to be healthier. Okay? So, what if you look at someone and you think they're beautiful? It's okay to think that someone is beautiful. The problem is when someone is not. Stop that right there. He's envy and he's complaining in his heart, maybe even out loud, yeah. that he's not deserve it and why him and not me. Mm -hmm. This is a different story. You can look at beautiful things, and there's actually a blessing to say when you see beautiful things. A blossom trees, the sky, a beautiful person. There's especially special blessing when you see beautiful people. Shehalak that Hashem share from it's his beauty to people. There is a blessing for you see someone's ugly. You know that? Sometimes you see someone scary. <laughs> scary looks like a monkey. I don't know. <laughs> you see him, you see a chimpanzee. Huh? And, uh, chimpanzee look better. There's a reason why God created him like that. By the way, why it happens? Huh? According to the Kabbalah, because this guy in the life before was a show-off. And now he's going to suffer. Really? Right? This is the way to rectify he, he, he was a, a hustler. He was like, uh, you know, someone that yes. cheat a lot. He was like, so this life is going to, what's the, what's the blessing? The blessing is, Baruch Meshane Haberiot. God is blessed that he created such a person. It's, everything happens for a reason, okay? And it happens to me a few times that I said this blessing. Just lately, I said this blessing in Walmart. All the creatures in Walmart, I'm telling you. <laughs> All the crazy people in Walmart. Especially if you go after midnight. Yeah, it's not yeah. What is this? <laughs> I hate going home. If you want to say this blessing a lot, go there after 2 o'clock. <laughs> You're going to say every five minutes. At least if there's any reward to say the blessing. Every blessing there's a reward. <laughs> Unbelievable. It doesn't matter the person's color, okay? Let me start with saying that black, white, yellow, red, it doesn't matter. What matter is the personality. It could be a black person is a wonderful people, wonderful person. A white person is corrupted. So, everybody knows, huh, according the Talmud already discussed that. There is someone that asked Hillel, the old, old Hillel Hazaken, he asked him, why people in Asia have eyes like that? Why in Africa they have big, big feet? Why uh, the color is this and that? And the Talmud explained living in certain places with the sun, it hits the skin, through the generation, they become darker and darker in order to protect that person. Okay? So you have someone that white goes to Africa or any you know, place that there's the, the sun hits all day, is going to be, he might get a sickness in his skin. He won't be able to bear it. Take someone from England, so that it's very dangerous for them. So it all depends where you're born and why you're like that. And the Talmud explained the healer's answers. In places, there's a lot of uh, sandstorm. They have eyes small, so to protect the eye. And big feet in places, they live in swamps. Uh, 
and so forth and so on. Okay, there's a reason for everything. This is why, no comparison, that some animals live in certain places because they, they, they can survive in such a climate. Make sense? Okay. But we should respect everyone. The way of Torah, doesn't, regardless of his color. Let me tell you something. One of the righteous people, one of ten, that was able to enter heaven, Gan Eden, with his body, he never died. There's ten people, there's a little of seven, ten, and even eleven different places in the Talmud, in the Midrash, that never dies. There's no burial, there's no grave, there's nothing. One of them is Eliyahu, Elijah, right? Mm-hmm. Bitya, the daughter of Pharaoh, she helped uh, Moses. One of them is a black person. Eliezer. Righteous. Eliezer, thank you. Eliezer, the servant of Abraham Avinu. Abraham Avinu trusted him as his own son. He loved him very much. He was such a righteous person that Hashem marked him as a tzaddik, righteous, and he never dies. He got this blessing. The, the Rambam explained that. That we have, we are created from four different types of material, different type of elements, right? The element is sand, wind, fire, and water. Mm-hmm. Everything in the world has to have these four elements. Adama, esh, ruach, main. Birds, fish, lion, people. It depends which element is more active and percentage is more is greater. So for birds, the element of wind is greater. For fish, the element of water. water. In people, it depends, it's very. Someone that the element of fire is you can see it. It's always you call it like to call H D D D D whatever. Right? Also that too. Well maybe one day we'll discuss about the zodiac. And the Mazalot, and why someone born in certain date, for example, King David, he was born of the time of Mars, Mars Maadin. Whoever born in such a day, certain date, the moon and some special stars on certain time, he'll become, he'll have a desire for blood. Desire for blood. So you can complain to God. Says, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to punish me that I'm killing people, that I'm punching, I like to see their blood? You created me that way. So the Torah says to them, no, this is not true. If you have a desire toward blood, be a mohel, be a doctor. <laughs> There's other good things you can do with this desire. Some, many of them, you are very, uh, uh, they are very good soldiers. They're not afraid. They can go to a fight, protect the country. So far, so on. You get the idea here? Okay. So someone that you see that he is quiet, is a layback person, the element of earth in him, some people, they're more spiritual. They don't care about how they look. They can go with one sock red and the other one green. <laughs> and they can go like, where is my glasses? All day long they can't find the glasses. The element of wind is more active there. They're more spiritual. That's, you understand what's going on here? As long as there is peace between these four elements, a person lives. When someone gets sick, it means that one of these elements is not in its place. If you know which one, you can give the right medicine. The Rambam knew. He says, there's something with the fire here. I'm going to give you this and that to light the fire back. It would give him dates. It would give him uh, some type of fruit and he's healthy again. You have to be very smart to do that, you know? And someday, everyone dies. There is no more peace in these elements. This is why Pinchas, which is Eliyahu, and the Torah Hashem says, I'm going to give him shalom. I'm going to give him peace. Peace, Hashem and Hashem give someone's peace, means all the four elements work together in peace, in harmony, and this is why he never dies. So, going back to what we say, you see that a black person can... He was a righteous, regardless of your color. 
You can become righteous or wicked. It's up to you. All right? What time is it? Okay. Let's finish this part. If one envies a man's comeliness or strength or wealth, then he does not desire what the blessed creator decreed. This is comparable to the situation of a servant who has complaints about his master's deeds and is not satisfied with his master's affairs. Uh -huh. This is not a loyal servant. It goes without saying that one must not rail against the blessed creator, all of those whose deeds are just and right and whose justice must not be questioned. Mm. You know, <laughs> there's some people, this, it's their nature to complain all the time. You know, we live today in generation that many things in our life are so easy. I remember, I was born in the 70s, and I remember that we, know, we didn't always uh, had phone. You have to wait in line until you get a phone. Some families waited for years. I'm not exaggerating. And by the time you get a phone, you know, it has this, uh, what do you call it, rotor? Rotary. And then it doesn't arrive to do it again. Today, we have phone. And it sometimes have two or three seconds delay. What is this for this wrong? The technology. People start to complain. What do you complain of? You have it in your hand. You have almost the whole world in your hand. Everything is so easy. People, this is in nature. They like to complain. Someone that complains about his situation or why someone else has and he's not is no less than betrayal in your own creator. Hashem is giving you so much. You can hear. You can breathe. You can smell. You can enjoy many things. Go to the hospital. See how they're feeding people through tubes, through their nose. Just spend one hour there. Then you appreciate everything God is giving you. But we don't. We like to complain. But yet, God is very merciful. God is very patient with us. How many times we sin against Hashem, against God, with the tools He gave us? He gave you a hand, He gave you a, hand, a head, He gave you eyes, He gave you legs, and with these tools, you go and rebel against them. You use your mouth, and He gives you the power to lie, to curse, to cheat, to laugh at other people. Why? Hashem said, I can make you silent. You won't talk at all. But I'm not doing this. You look at places you're not supposed to look. I can make you blind in a second. But I'm not doing this. You know, some people pushing it. Pushing and pushing till it gets to the level that just says enough is enough. Don't push it. Always calculate what you did right, what you did wrong, and how you can make yourself better. Using the tools Hashem gave us, to do tzedakah and chesed and mitzvot and help. Because that's the only thing eventually that will bring you close to God. God says, you want to be close to me? I need to be like me. What do you mean like me? Merciful and pleasant and happy. All the good things. If you're on the other side, you're going to stay on the other side. I won't have any business with you. People don't understand. I'm praying to God. I'm praying. I'm praying. He's not listening. Because you're full of sins. You are corrupted. You rejected God yourself with your bad actions. What do you expect? That God's going to be with you. you, you you're full of tumah. You're full of impurity. God is pure. Be pure. That's the whole, that's the whole deal. That's the whole trick. Capish? Okay. I, I uh, plan to... Uh, share with you more information about Korah. Bezrat Hashem, God willing, this is something that we are going to do next time. I don't have enough time. Um, we're going to focus a little bit more about what Korah did, how is it possible, and how is it possible that even little kids died. You know when Korah died? Mm -hmm. Little kids in the crib yes. was part of this mass, that. and they were swollen by the earth. Mm -hmm. Why? 
This is the punishment for being envy and challenging someone like Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu. Instead of being appreciative, especially one that has everything, that got everything from me. So all these kind of uh, topics and issues we're going to discuss, get willing next week. I want to wish you all the best, guys. All those who are watching us, please uh, go to ohaveisraelfoundation.org and place your donation in order to support the Torah learning, the Torah classes, and the help out to families in need. Any questions? Anyone? God bless you and have all the best. And thank you again for the Medina's family for hosting this show. Laila Tov.